the infinite abyss of a mediocre universe. In the desolate vacuum of space, no one can hear you snore, but during Stanley Kubrick's 2001, A Space Odyssey, the entire theater trembles from the seismic snoring generated by audiences pulverized into catatonia. Released in 1968 to pompous fanfare, this agonizing art film has been praised as genius, visionary, and the greatest sci-fi film ever made. It undoubtedly is a towering cinematic achievement in its ability to bore humans to oblivion. Mere minutes into this epic journey across time and space, and you'll be begging for sweet release into the infinite oblivion of the cosmos. I went into this expecting a psychedelic celestial roller coaster that would shatter my earthbound illusions and open portals in my mind. What I got instead was a sensory deprivation tank where all notions of plot, drama, and basic entertainment are sucked into the void. This movie doesn't have a story so much as a series of numbingly dull events stitched together by endless establishing shots of spaceships jerking slowly through the abyss. Actual human dialogue is so sparse you could count the sentences on one hand and not even need all your fingers. Kubrick seems to think his grandiose visuals and lumbering pace make petty human concerns like engaging characters and compelling storytelling irrelevant, but all his smug pretentiousness does is expose the hollowness at this film's core. Don't get me wrong, I'm all for ambitious cinema that challenges the audience, but 2001 feels less like Kubrick is enlightening us and more like he's testing our endurance to see how long we stay before bolting for the sweet reprieve of the popcorn stand. Scene after scene waits for some revelation that never arrives, unless you count a psychedelic light show and Louis XVI furniture as paths to transcendence. The characters are no relief, as they have the emotional range and complexity of department store mannequins. The stupefied astronauts spend 90% of their time performing mundane tasks while staring numbly into the distance. I've seen more intriguing behavior from coma patients. At least if one of them suddenly died, it would provide some much needed drama. But when the ship's computer HAL does rebel and starts murdering the crew, Kubrick botches the potential for tension. Instead of a climactic battle, we get pontifical speeches between HAL and his human hostage, punctured by languid, drawn-out deaths. Any menace shrivels in the yawning gaps between lines of dialogue. And just when it finally gets quasi-interesting, it's over as suddenly as it began, back to aimlessly drifting through the cosmos. I will grant some of the visual effects were impressive, especially for 1968. But dazzling pyrotechnics alone does not a compelling film make. After the third hyperextended montage of psychedelic colors swirling to classical music, I found myself desperately longing for the squares and sprockets of an actual plot to emerge. Even just some clunky exposition would be a welcome relief from gazing endlessly into Kubrick's navel as he contemplates the infinite. I confess I almost ruptured my eye muscles rolling them during the final sequence, which reveals the ultimate cosmic truth at the end of this torturous saga, an over-decorated 18th century set piece and a space fetus. That's it. Cue credits. After enduring Kubrick's interminable epic, apparently all evolution has in store for mankind is gilded furniture. I nearly demanded a refund for having my precious time wasted. In summary, 2001 is the cinematic equivalent of Andy Warhol's Empire, an eight-hour film of a single shot of the Empire State Building. Just as Empire challenges the viewer to find meaning in boredom, 2001 seeks transcendence in banality. And much like Warhol's film, Kubrick's 2001 is an experimental endurance test thinly disguised as high art, one that sadistically punishes its audience under the guise of elevating them. So if you have ten spare hours and want to have your patience, resolve and sanity stretched to their very limits, by all means, watch 2001.
a space odyssey. Just don't expect to return with your mind expanded to cosmic proportions. The only thing you'll have gained is a deeper appreciation for the joy of human consciousness after experiencing such excruciating tedium. This movie doesn't enlarge your mind so much as crush it under the weight of boredom. Consider yourself warned 